Hello and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to talk about a topic called molar concentration. It sounds kind of complicated, but when you think about it, if you pick apart that phrase, molar concentration, uh, you actually sort of already know what it means. Concentration is something we have from everyday language, you know? When something is a concentrated, you know, it means it's very strong or powerful, right? And when something is not very concentrated, it's pretty weak. And that's basically what we're going to talk about in this section. The term molar just refers to what we've been using for many, many, many lessons, which is that moles, how many moles of something exist. And you'll see how, of these, how these two things are tied together here in just a minute. Now what we're going to do is illustrate what this is all about, and we're going to work a ton of problems to give you some practice with molar concentration because you'll find that you're going to use it uh, it's one of those bedrock skills that you'll use pretty much in almost every lesson after this in your, uh, in your lectures here on my uh, DVD series and also in your professor and your uh, textbook as well. So when we talk about molar concentration, I want you to think in your head of something that you can wrap your brain around, something that you have a lot of experience with every day. And that is taking water, mixing sugar into it. All right. So what you do anytime you take something that can dissolve and you put it into a liquid that can dissolve it is you create a solution, right? We, we all know this. So in this case, we're talking about sugar water. And I'm, I'm using this because I know you have experience with it and I know you can, you can relate to it. Now, obviously, if I have a glass of water here, right, and I put so much sugar, let's say a spoonful of sugar in there, and mix it up really nicely where all of that sugar is dissolved, evenly distributed throughout the glass of sugar water, and I taste it, it's going to be a little sweeter, right, than regular water, obviously. Now, if we take, you know, five more teaspoons and put it in, into that water and stir it up really good, and let's say we can dissolve all of that, then we'll have a much sweeter solution of sugar water, right? So we say it's more concentrated. So I'm, I'm illustrating terms to you because these are terms that are defined in usually your chemistry book, a concentrated solution, right? That's all we're doing here. We're, we're giving an example to kind of show you how that's done. So if you have a lot of sugar in there, we call it concentrated. In other words, a concentrated solution is just when you have more stuff dissolved in there. That's all it means. And if you start over again with a glass of water and just put a teeny tiny amount of sugar, maybe like a, two or three grains of sugar, in the entire glass. You taste it, you really can't even taste any sugar. Maybe you taste a tiny bit of sugar. Then we call that a dilute solution. We've diluted it or it's, it's become dilute, right? Because there's not much there. Now, um, it's important to, to also talk about what is being dissolved and what we are dissolving the sugar, in this case, in, right? So the, the glass of water, in this case, the actual liquid, we call it the solvent, right? That's a word that you've probably heard in everyday life. But anytime you have a liquid, usually we're talking about liquids and we're putting some solid in like sugar to dissolve in there, the liquid that you start with that's doing the dissolving, so to speak, that's called the solvent, right? The powder or the solid or whatever it is you're dissolving into this, into this liquid solvent, right? We call this powder, in this case sugar, we're calling it the solute. So what we have here is just to kind of be clear, the solvent is what we are dissolving in. In other words, this is the liquid that we're kind of 